but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. Works is Satan's counterfeit of the gospel. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Which curse? For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Did you notice that the works of the law and the curse of the law are both related to a tree? The tree, of course, is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which represents the religion of reward and punishment, the religion of works, and therefore, anyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them are punished through Satan's system of reward and punishment. A religion of works can never lead to a true understanding of God because God is a God of grace, not works. Furthermore, those who believe their works purchase God's salvation will never find rest because they are focused on their own righteousness instead of God's righteousness. It is only by beholding God that we become like Him. Apart from that, we are caught in a never-ending treadmill trying to achieve perfection. The Bible is clear. Baal is the God of works. He was known as the God of the weather, and He judged people in order to reward or punish them. He was tyrannical, whimsical, unpredictable and needed to be appeased through sacrifices. A relationship with him entailed a servant-master relationship. Obedience was required in order to escape his punishments. This is Baal, not God. The creature behind this mythical God is Satan, the God of reward and punishment, the God of works, which is the iniquity that was found in him. In the Bible, Egypt is presented as the house of bondage. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor, with harshness, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service in which they made them serve was with rigor, harshness. Mortar and brick are not naturally occurring minerals like gold or stone or rock. Mortar and brick represents man-made works and are the same materials used to build the Tower of Babel, with which they aspired to reach heaven in order to escape destruction through their own merits. In Egypt, the system of reward and punishment is clearly represented by Pharaoh's crook and flail, which in the book of Job, Satan clearly admitted to be his system of government. Satan's harsh system of bondage is represented in the book of Isaiah through the king of Babylon. It shall come to pass in the day that the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and the hard bondage in which you were made to serve, that you will take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has ceased, the golden city ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. He who struck the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he who ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and no one hinders. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. In the ancient Hebrew language, lexicon, the word weakened is comprised of two different sets of symbols. The first one means something that is weak, failing, decayed, or wasted away. The second set of symbols has a pictograph that means the picture of the eye representing knowledge and experience. And the next pictograph is the picture of a shepherd's staff or yoke. Combined, these means experience the staff. The yoke, a staff, is lifted over the shoulder, is attached to the oxen for performing work. There is no room for works in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. To justify means to absolve, to acquit, to clear from any charge or imputation, to render, that is, show or regard as just or innocent. 